Oh, I'm so excited for this year's science fair, but, um, I think I'm the only one here. I'm sure the invitation said it was today. Aha! Ah! Oh, 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 my very first student. Welcome in, welcome in. I am Professor Bogglewig, and today we are going to be learning about the amazing world of science. Hey, uh, uh, quick question, though. Um, am I the only student here? Yes, it appears you are the only one brave enough to join me on this fantabulous journey. Are you ready? Well, uh... Great, because our first lesson will be told by my canine friend, Hey Dougie. And it's all about a little thing called biology. But I thought you were the teacher. Hmm. Biology is all about how our bodies work and why we are the way we are. Like why I'm blue? Yes. Why I'm loud! Indeed. Why I love water? Oh. Why I'm so clever? Oh. Why Enid is making that funny noise? <coughs> oh. Oh yes, that's all to do with biology. <laughs> Enid is a Felis Domestica. Felis who? A common domestic cat. And her body is a complex network of physiological systems. Physio-whatical? Hmm. There must be a better way to explain all this, Dougie. <coughs> oh, woof! We can take a much closer look at Enid on the biology bus. Hop in, squirrels! <laughs> Time to set the microscopic ray to... <laughs> Miniaturize! Whoa! We're tiny! Oh, yes, tiny enough to find out what's making Enid so spluttery. <laughs> now, if you look ahead, you can see Enid's brain. Ooh. Whenever she feels something, the synapses in her brain fire up. Whoa! <laughs> Based on all this cognitive activity, I'd say Enid is doing something very complex. Wow. Where are we now? We're currently passing Enid's eyes. Ooh. Cats have powerful eyesight for hunting prey. And nasal receptors for smelling things. <laughs> and, of course, vocal cords for purring. It's dark down here. Oh, woof! Yeah, what are those? Blood cells. They're a bit... <laughs> Yes, but they help move oxygen around in its body. <laughs> Pumped by her heart. And when she gets excited... <laughs> her heart starts beating faster. <laughs> which means her lungs have to work hard to get more oxygen into her body. Now she's getting her breath back. <laughs> this is fun! Oh, well, thank you, Dougie, for such a wonderful introduction to the science fair. You've actually made things a lot clearer, wouldn't you say so, Dodge? Well... <laughs> exactly. I'm... Now, remember, to watch the rest of Hey Dougie's biology lesson, you can head to the BBC iPlayer, where you can also watch the full episodes of everything you have seen today. Well, that is one lesson I will not be forgetting. Well, <laughs> now it is time for lesson two. What do you know about a little thing called gravity? Gra gravity? Uh, I don't think I know anything. What is it? Well, gravity is an invisible force which is all around us, which keeps things firmly on the ground. And without it, we all float around like this. Whoa! Hey, but, but, but floating sounds like so much fun. I wouldn't have to walk anywhere ever again. I want to float. <laughs> 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 
Nice try, little one. But without gravity, it wouldn't just be you and I that would be floating around. Well, it would be everything. Everything? But even my bowl, even my kennel? Yes, even your bowl and your kennel. There would be no sleepy time for you. Oh, okay. Well, well, maybe it's a good thing that we have gravity then. Playing around with gravity can make for some tremendous fun. And for our first experiment, I'd like to introduce you to my furry lab friend, Bingo, who has a rather fascinating device called a feather wand. Ooh! Louie, do you want cereal? Yeah, you want cereal. Cereal heavy! Huh? I said cereal heavy! Oh, 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 what's going on? This is some heavy cereal! Must have a lot of flavor. <laughs> oh, oh, forget this. Heavy. Oh, oh. <laughs> Heavy. What's going on? That's weird. Oh, it's heavy. Mom, do I definitely have to clean my teeth? Yes. No. Oh. Bluey, what did you do with the party invitation? I need the address. Oh, there it is. I'll just pick Heavy. it up. <laughs> what? Oh, can't pick it up. Oh, well, I'll just have to write it on my hand. Heavy. Ah! Huh? Now this pen is heavy. Mm. Okay. It's 20... Six... <laughs> no, jeez! Road! Oh, what's wrong, Bandit? We used to be able to lift spoons. What are you doing? Nothing. Eat your floor cereal. OK. This is the best morning ever. Something weird is going on. Yeah, tell me about... Okay. That. Whoa! Ooh. Ah! It's been gone. Yeah. It's got a feather wall. Get him! <laughs> stomp, stomp, stomp. We need to find the treasure before the volcano erupts, Hugo. Uh, our volcano is like Great Grand Grand's in St Lucia. Dormant. I wish it could erupt like the volcano in my book. Hmm. I think it's time for another Grand Grand plan. I just need to collect some things from in here. Hmm. Washing up liquid, water, vinegar, and bicarbonate of soda. Those things don't look like lava. Ha <laughs> ha! When I mix these ingredients together, you're going to see something very surprising. <laughs> Let's take our volcano outside. <laughs> this might get messy. There we are. Can we pour it into the volcano now? OK. Do you need this? Oh, yes, thank you. That should help it bubble up. Wait for it. It's about to erupt. <laughs> It's the wrong colour. Aha! I forgot one special ingredient. A few drops of red food colouring will do. That's it! <laughs> Wait for it! It's going to erupt again! <laughs> Oh, look at the size of this Diplodocus. It's huge. And it's only a teenager, which means it's going to get even bigger. Look. There are some more over there. And they're eating ferns too. Are those the ones I need? No. 
The ones I need are the giant ferns that the adults eat. I need to get out this forest. Come on. Well, I'm out the forest now, but I still can't see any adults anywhere. Now, what's that sound? Where's the ground shaking? Exactly what I've been looking for. A whole herd of adult Diplodocus. <laughs> right, I'm going to follow them. Hopefully, they're off to eat some giant ferns. Then I can grab some too. <laughs> Did you see that? An adult Diplodocus has pushed down the tree to get to the giant ferns on the other side. Come on. Wow, the Diplodocus's neck was so long. Why, if the Diplodocus was around today, I would use that neck as a slide. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dodge, can you remember where we can watch more of our CBB's friends? Oh, um, BBC iPlayer? Wonderful! Ah. <laughs> and you can download the app for free. Now for our next lesson. How inventions can help us in our everyday lives. Wow, uh, Rebecca, I mean Professor Bogglewig. Uh, what's an invention? Very good question, young sir. <laughs> now an invention is something we make or invent to help us solve a problem. Ooh. Now, please, can you pass me the robot from up over there? Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> oh, it's just too high, Professor Bogglewig. Yeah, I can't reach it. I know. We need to invent something so that I can reach it. What a marvelous idea. <laughs> we need something that can reach up and get it. Yeah, maybe a ladder? Or a hot air balloon? Wait, what? Or maybe a rocket? Might be a bit much. Or a helicopter? Or maybe an aeroplane? Or even better, a catapult well, so we can actually <laughs> fly through the air? Um, I'm not sure any of those ideas are very sensible. Oh, I know. I wonder if our friend Jojo can help us. Yes. Good idea. Jojo? <laughs> uh, 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 oh. Oh. We might have to see if Cynthia's home. The sofa's too heavy to move on my own. We need to invent a big sofa moving machine. Hmm. <gasps> hmm. I think it's time for a grand grand plan. I don't think we've got time to invent a sofa moving machine, but we can invent something smaller. <laughs> And dinosaurs, we present to you a brand new invention. Jojo and Gran Gran's Key Collector. Right, let's try again. Doing Grand Grand's key collector doesn't work. Oh, inventions don't always work at first. Sometimes you have to think of ways to make them better. Hmm. Maybe we should make lots of hooks or cover the hook with glue. Hmm. That might be a bit sticky. <gasps> Jojo! We don't need something to stick to the key. We need something to attract it. 
<gasps> the fridge magnet! Octonauts, Tweak has invited us all here today to show us her latest top secret invention. Ready, Tweak? Ready, Cap! <laughs> Avast! What are you putting on my ship? Don't get your tail twisted, Quasi. This here is gonna keep the gubs from getting banged up all the time. Huh? They'll never crash again. Never? <laughs> but uh, even the best pilots can make mistakes sometimes. That's right. But when I use my remote control to turn on these boxes, the gubs can drive them. I call it the Smart Duck Remote Control. Yes. Yes. It's an amazing invention, Tweak. I never thought a gup could drive like that without a good pilot behind the wheel. Ah, uh, no remote control can pilot the gup B as well as I can. With the Smart Duck Remote Control, anybody can be a great pilot. Here, Shellington, <gasps> give it a whirl. Um. But, uh, well, no, I, I've never been the best driver. Oh. 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 oh no! Look! They're going to hit the octopod! Oh! Oh! Shiver! Whiskers! Don't worry! <laughs> Gup remote control, the Gups are totally crash-proof. They stop by themselves before they crash into anything. Oh. <laughs> 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 hey! Ugh, it's evil, P, little potato. Now, Say hello to my new and very evil power suit! <gasps> hello! <laughs> Give that playhouse back, P! It's not for playing with! Well, okay, technically it is, but not by you! Playtime's over, puny grapes! Now I can take whatever I want! Well, that's not very nice. No, it isn't. Of course it's not nice. I'm evil P, not nice P. Ugh. And now I'm mega strong and powerful P too. <laughs> that's one strong power suit. We need a plan to stop it. I've got a plan. That power suit's no match for my super strength. <laughs> super Tato, wait! Don't worry, Carrot. I've got this. Potato, stop! <laughs> you see, Professor, making things to solve a problem doesn't really have to be complicated at all. Maybe you're right. But you know what? I would love to see more of Evil P's super machine. How could I do that, young Dodge? Oh, well, <laughs> BBC iPlayer, of course. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Ask your grown-up to download the free app to watch full episodes and see if Super Tato saves the day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh. oh, Professor, what have you got there? Well, this is my rocket ship. <gasps> I flew it into space and... It bumped into an asteroid and now it's broken. Oh. I'm trying to use my science brain to fix it. Hmm. Well, would you like any help? Uh, no, no, I'm fine. Just this piece goes here and yes, this piece goes here. I don't think it does. I think maybe you should try the other. No, 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 I'm fine. I am a professor. I know what I am doing. Okay, let's have a look here like that and then... Oh, okay, maybe I'm not fine. I lost the instructions last time I was visiting Mars. And now I'll never be able to get this back together. Oh, well, don't panic, <laughs> Professor. I know someone who can help us. Yeah, our friend Grace knows all about space machines. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. 
My first amazing space machine has metal wheels, special cameras, and has been built to look for alien life. It's a Mars rover! A Mars rover is a machine built to work on Mars. Mars is known as the red planet and is about half the size of our Earth. Whilst it's there, it'll carry out experiments looking for signs of life. So let's explore this amazing machine. The Mars rover looks a bit like a massive remote-controlled car. There are six metal wheels on the rover, each with these special grooves on, which allow it to drive easily over the rocky surface. The rover's main role is to carry out experiments on Mars, so it has lots of kit on board, including a drill. This is so it can drill deep into the ground and find out what's there. It also has cameras on it to help it move around. This one at the top takes large photos of Mars' surface and then it works out the safest route to get from one point to another. How clever is that? There aren't any petrol stations or electric charging points on Mars, so the rover has to use these solar panels to get power. They turn sunlight into energy, which keeps it moving. So, you will be the planets. Off. And Dougie will be the sun. Off. The sun? Yes, Tag. The sun is a star. Burning brightly at the center of our solar system. Wow. What am I? You're Mercury, the closest planet to the sun. Yes. <laughs> Happy is Venus, the hottest planet of all. Not A is Earth. Tag is Mars. What about me? You're Jupiter, Betty. Wow, I'm huge. Because Jupiter is huge. Then there's Saturn, ah. Uranus, Neptune, and there's even a dwarf planet called Pluto. And they all spin around the sun. The whole thing is called the solar system. Amazing! I wish I could go into space. Yeah, can we? That would be fun, but all these planets are millions of miles away. You'd need a rocket ship to get there. Oh, woof! <gasps> Dougie's got an idea! Five, four, three, two, one! There's Venus, there's Mars, and Jupiter, and Saturn too. Yes, all the planets are out here. So much space for playing. Yay! <laughs> Where's the space playground, Dougie? Uh, woof. Um, there are no playgrounds in space, Squiddles. Huh? Paddling pools? Woof. Bouncy castles? Woof. Tree houses? Woof. Toilet? Oh, woof. Uh. But there are lots of other things. Amazing things. Oh. Like the Milky Way. Is it made of milk? No, Dag. It just looks a bit milky. Oh, woof, woof. Ah, yes. The asteroid belt. <laughs> And here, near the end of the solar system, is Pluto. Whoa. Are we going back now? Oh. oh, Jojo, I think it's time for a grand grand plan. We can build our own speedy rocket.
Speedy Rocket ready! Three, two, one! Hold on tight, Panda! Blast off! Wow! It's very bumpy, Panda! We're entering space! Look at the sparkling stars, Panda. It's very dark in space, Gran Gran. Is it time to land on the moon yet? Not yet, Jojo. The moon is really far away, remember? It takes a long time to get there. We've been in space for a long time now, Gran Gran. How much longer till we reach the moon? Ooh. Uh... I still think it's a lot of sleeps, Jojo. Whoa! OK. Oh! Sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up. And we're here. We made it. Woohoo! Before we land, we need to get into our landing craft. <laughs> Let's land on the moon! Oh, I hope Jojo makes it to the moon. You can find out if she does or not by heading to BBC iPlayer. Oh, now, Grace and her amazing machines has given me a great idea to build my very own machine. <laughs> I've got these blocks here, so I'm going to use these blocks to make it. I've got five blocks here. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> five blocks to make my very own machine. <laughs> okay. Huh? Hang on this. One, two, three, four, five. I had five blocks. I did, didn't I? Yeah, I'm going to count them again. Okay. One, two, three. Three blocks! What's happening to these blocks? There were five, and then there was four, and then there's three, and now, now there's only two! Two blocks! If it, now there's one block. Oh, what's happening with these blocks? Oh. Thank you, Dodge. Just <gasps> one final block to make my pyramid. Now it is complete. <laughs> Fantastic. Hmm. Dodge, what have you made? <sighs> Nothing. I think you might need some help with your counting. And I know the perfect dog to help you earn your counting badge. One. Good start, Tag. Two. A wolf. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. We did it. We counted to ten. Woof! Now you count the next ten. This time up to twenty. But we've counted everything here. Then let's go to a oh, woof! <gasps> the kitchen! Eleven, twelve. Um. Ah, now we're entering the teens. Uh, they can be a bit tricky. A oh, woof woof! Now you're in the twenties. Oh, woof! So, start with twenty... One! Yes! Now... Twenty-two! Oh, woof! Twenty-three! Superb! Twenty-four! Twenty-five! Twenty-six! Twenty-seven! Twenty-eight! Twenty-nine! Thirty! Lovely! Now, what are you going to count next? Thirty! It's five little speckled frogs! Woohoo! <laughs> five little speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum! One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four speckled frogs. Glub, glub! <laughs> Only four left now. Four little speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum! 
One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three speckled frogs. Glub, glub. <laughs> One, two, three left. Three little speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were two speckled frogs. Glub, glub, ho oh, ho, only two left. Two little speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there was one speckled frog. Glub, glub. Oh, only one left. <laughs> one little speckled frog sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. It jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no speckled frogs. Glub, glub, ribbit, ribbit. Oh, that was great. Oh, I am delighted. My first student to graduate in science fair. Oh, thank you, Professor Bogglewig. I wouldn't have learned so much if it wasn't for... My help. Well, I truly am the master of science and all knowledge. Uh, actually, I was going to say if it wasn't for my CBB's friends, they've taught me so much today. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, for more lessons, I think I am going to... Come back tomorrow, of course. Well, I would be delighted. And then we can fly my rocket ship to Mars. It's fixed, you know. Actually, I was going to say go to BBC iPlayer to watch everything we've seen today. Hmm. Well, do you know what, Dodge? Yes, Professor Bogglewig? I think I will come with you. Oh.